Johnny Farnham may have been named Australian of the Year, but for a lot of rock fans, Jimmy Barnes is still the closest thing we've got to a working class hero. The kid from the wrong side of the tracks who tells it, or at least sings it, like it is. Barnes started off as the rebellious lead singer of Cold Chisel. He was well known as a real hellraiser with his heavy boozing and wild, wild ways. But then someone came along to help change all that. You'll meet her a bit later in the story. He ain't His measure is a string of hit records and an army of almost fanatical fans, then Jimmy Barnes is a superstar. Australia's number one heavy rocker. Oh, he sung his way out of a railway yard into a lifestyle he'd only ever dreamed about. I think, uh, you know, you've got to find what you're going to do in life and do it. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a rock singer, or a politician, or, you know, you bake bread. You know, as long as, you, long as you do, you know, with conviction, I guess. A song from his latest album that sold over half a million copies. It's about a truck driver and it goes a long way to explain the success of Jimmy Barnes, the hard-living, hard-loving, working-class hero, a role he played to the hilt and that almost brought him unstuck. Like, at one stage, I, I was drinking, like, a, a bottle of whisky and a bottle of Drambuie on stage in, like, an hour, you know, and I'd just be gaga, you know, and, and like, I remember me and you know, a couple of the guys in the band would be out drinking on binges and stuff and we'd be up for three or four days, you know. Crazy it was. He's talking about his days with the band that made him famous, Cold Chisel. Famous not just for his singing. His behaviour both on and off stage earned him the reputation as the wild man of rock and roll. But unlike most rock stars, it wasn't just an image. What you saw is what you got. It must have got close to the point where your health was at risk. Did it ever get to that? Oh, I was too hungover to notice. It was. <laughs> I didn't at the time. I obviously, didn't think about it. When you, when you're 18, you're invincible. You know. Um, and that, let's face it. When I was 18, I didn't even want to live to be 30. I thought, God, 30. He wants to be 30. You know. Live fast, die young, have a good-looking corpse. You know. <laughs> I think that Barnsley and Cultures really became that focal point for the aspirations of and a whole army of working class, class people who really did think that it was a very manly thing to do to be able to go out there and sort of drink and rage and rock hard and keep bouncing back from it. And Journalist and rock and roll historian Glenn A. Baker. I don't think Jimmy, when he was bending the elbow or when he was getting up on stage and screaming and roaring, had any thought in the back of his mind that says, I'm becoming the working class hero, or I'm, I'm creating a blueprint for others to follow. He was just doing what came naturally. He was, he was just doing what anybody else from his background who had, who had come into those circumstances would do. He was, he was being Jimmy Barnes. <laughs> To understand Jimmy Barnes, it helps to know where he came from. Elizabeth, a satellite town near Adelaide. A tough training ground for any kid. Jimmy came here with his family from Glasgow when he was five. He quickly learned that surviving in Elizabeth meant knowing how to fight. The terrible thing about Elizabeth is there's nothing for, for teenagers to do there at all. And uh, yeah, not really bored and, and uh, basically we'd go out and fight, you know, and maybe, you know, 
whoever looked the oldest would try and sneak in and get some booze. And Why would you We'd fight? all get drunk on a bottle of beer. <laughs> Why would you fight? What would start a fight? Ah, uh, nothing started the fight. Uh, fighting was something that was just par for the course. That's what you did for fun in Elizabeth. You know, like it was beat, beat or be beaten sort of syndrome there. You know, like uh, we, we'd do it like people we didn't know. And beaten, be he sometimes was. Like the time young Jimmy learnt his first lesson of the streets. Always pick on someone your own size. Um, this is the last time I ever picked a street fight. Uh, there, was, there was a guy who was probably, you know, just a quiet bloke, you know. He's a big guy, you know, bigger than me, but he was just a quiet bloke. And, uh, and I followed him for about a couple of hundred yards. I went up to him, stopped him again, said, let's go. And he said, no, look, I really don't want to fight you. Don't do it. And he walked away. So I walked up and I hit him, and he turned around and beat the shit out of me, you know. Just, it gave me a real kicking, you know. Was kick. that the last fight you ever had? Yep, he kicked me to bits. No, that wasn't the last fight I ever had. It's the last one I ever picked. <laughs> like most kids at Elizabeth, when you left school, you got a trade. At 16, Jimmy got his first job, an apprentice in a railway foundry. He lasted eight months. I'd say he was the biggest larrikin that I ever had under me. <laughs> Not the kind of recommendation you'd boast about, but then Tony Matthews should know. He was Jimmy's first boss in that railway foundry. What was Jimmy like as a worker? As a worker, all right, all right, as a worker, when he worked. <laughs> what do you mean, when he worked? Well, you had to find him. He's a bugger. <laughs> it was hard to find, was he? Well, it was hard to find, all right. Yeah, he'd be sitting behind the boxes playing bloody euchre with another joker or, you know... Sleeping. Sleeping. Sleeping on the job during the day and at night doing this. This battered old film taken by a friend stands as a bit of a classic. It shows Jimmy starting out with cold chisel, long before he could afford any lavish video clips. The working class hero had hit the launching pad to a wild ride to success. At the time, Jimmy was no angel. He had one of the wildest reputations in the business. Yes. What, what did your parents say when you said, I'm going out with Jimmy Barnes? Well, they didn't like it very much and they asked me to go home. They were she couldn't have come from a more different world. Jimmy's wife, Jane, a diplomat's daughter from Thailand who fell in love with the raging Aussie rock star. Did you fall in love with the man or was it perhaps his music and the lifestyle that went with it? Well, I think the man, because I certainly wasn't, um, you know, I I'd had no idea of his lifestyle until after I'd met him. And, um, you know, one of the reasons why I, I did go back to my parents was because I couldn't, I couldn't understand and accept his lifestyle. Why was that? Because it was just so, <laughs> so self-destructive more than anything. He was drinking too much? Just everything. We just partied three days non-stop, you know, three, four days. We just... crazy. <laughs> if there's one thing that means more to him than his music, it's Jane. He wrote this song about her because he really believes that without her love, he would not be around. Let's take one song, Without Your Love. Now, does that express your thoughts for Jane? Does that say it all? Yeah, well, it's also it says a bit about what we are talking before about the... Um the drinking and whatnot, because basically, you know, if, if Jane wasn't there, I probably would still be doing what I was doing, and you know, I probably literally would be dead. Uh, but, you know, between Jane and my family, you know, they gave me something to live for, I guess. What you're saying, Jimmy, is that Jane really saved your life. Yeah, yeah. But I saved her from a really boring career at university, you know. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? It's my story, sad but true. Jackie, come over here. You've got to be in the back in the group. Three more reasons for Rock's heavy rocker to slow down. His daughters, Mahalia and Eliza Jane, 
and son Jackie. Ready? Hip, hip. It's not like you know, like you can finish a show and go out and drink for three days because you know, you finish a show and you go back and see if your babies are okay. Sing, let's go. So marriage and being a dad has tamed Australia's wild man of rock and roll. I'd say so. Yeah, <laughs> not completely though. Is that something you you bridle at when people suggest that the marriage has tamed Jimmy Barnes? Um, no, no, it's um, it's definitely definitely done something to me. It's definitely tamed me a bit, you know. It's um, but it's not it's not like I've been I've been broken or anything. It's something it's from my own choice, you know. And guess who's following in Dad's footsteps? The first birthday present little Jackie ever got was a guitar. Let's go! And what's three-year-old Eliza Jane Barnes doing here? Ask her father and he'll tell you it's perfectly normal. You see, when Jimmy Barnes goes on tour, so does the family. We toured uh, America last year and everybody thought it was crazy. One, because of the expense, and um, and two, because, you know, rock and roll bands don't take their wives and kids on the road. They're supposed to be out, you know, locking up people's daughters and things, you know. But basically, that's the only way I can tour, because if I don't have them there, you know, I I just end up, I can't work, and I have to come home. Come on. Today, Jimmy okay. lives with his family on a country estate near Sydney. So, you might ask, in becoming the wealthy family man, has Jimmy Barnes strayed too far away from his working class world? Not according to Jimmy. I, I love people you know, who, who work and who are battlers, you know. I, I, I feel strongly for them, I feel, feel really close to them because, you know, you know, that was, uh, you know, I, I know what they've been through. You still see yourself as a working class man? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Hi, kids. Take him back to the old pub where it all began, the Largs Pier Hotel in Adelaide, and you'll soon see that Jimmy Barnes remains very much in tune with his roots. Adele. There will always be a place at the bar here for the local hero. Do you know that? And what does his old boss, Tony Matthews, think about the way his apprentice turned out? Now, he definitely must be a better bloody singer than what he would have ever made a tradesman, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, so that's natural. Would you like to go to one of Jimmy's concerts? No. <laughs> really? Bore me to tears, all that bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> The boy from Elizabeth is giving it everything he's got, straight from the heart, just like he's always done. It's almost as if he feels he has a debt to pay, and maybe he has. Well, I, I owe a lot to the people who buy my records and people who come and see us because, uh, you know, they've taken me from the, the foundry to, you know, to living in the lap of luxury, basically. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.